Welcome to Education Beat. I'm Ann Vasquez, CEO of EdSource. If children were enrolled in a public school in California's K-12 system in the 2021-22 school year, they might have money for college waiting for them. More than a year and a half ago, California launched a big initiative to help children from low-income families save money for college. It's called the California Kids Investment and Development Savings Program, or just CalKids. The program has the potential to serve 3.6 million students, but only a tiny fraction of those have signed up to activate their accounts. What parents need to know is that there is a program that's investing in the future of California kids. All you have to do is claim the money and watch it grow. Who is eligible for CalKids? And what needs to happen to get the word out to more families? Here is this week's Education Beat with host Zadie Stabley. Elizabeth Jonathan Rosas is a trustee on the Fresno Unified School Board, but she's also a foster mom. About seven months ago, a nine-year-old boy was placed with her, and she's hoping to adopt him. We started having those conversations about, okay, college and all of that. I mean, (laughs) he's nine, so um, it is still a little ways off, but I understand that as as a foster kid, they're a group that statistically doesn't go to college as often, and, you know, funding college is one of the main barriers. Elizabeth had heard before about the Cal Kids program. It's a state program that provides money to low-income kids, English learners, foster kids, and homeless kids that they can use for college. She wanted to make sure her son's account was activated, so she logged onto the website. And I, I couldn't figure it out. Um, it asked for an ID number that was nowhere in his paperwork. I called the number And it was a little difficult trying to get a hold of someone. And um, the main question was, you know, where is this number? How can I get it? Or could you provide it to me? The people at CalKids told Elizabeth she could find the number, a state student ID number, on a postcard they send out to all eligible kids. But Elizabeth hadn't received a postcard, probably because her son had just been placed with her a few months before. They told her she could also call his school to get the number. When I contacted the the school, some of the staff there didn't know what number I was exactly talking about. And so it took me a minute uh, to to get the right number from from the school and then be able to to log in. It turned out that Elizabeth's foster son's account had already been activated. But she says the fact that it was so hard for her to even log in means it could be even harder for other parents. I'm a fairly sophisticated, digitally literate person, um, and I was determined to make it happen. And it required a few calls and, um, you know, some persistence on my end. Um, And so it was a little challenging. And some of our families who don't speak English or may not have as readily um, access to technology may find it a lot more difficult. And those are the families whose kids uh, we particularly want to make sure are accessing this program. This is Education Beat, getting to the heart of California schools. I'm Zadie Stabley. This week, free money for college isn't getting to all the kids who need it. million kids are eligible to get money for college through CalKids. But so far, the vast majority of the kids who are eligible have not activated their accounts. My colleague, Lisherika Thornton, wrote about how few CalKids accounts have been activated and what some districts, like Fresno Unified, are doing to try to get out the word. Hi, Lisherika. Hey. So, Lisherika, what is CalKids? The acronym, it's the California Kids Investment and Development Savings Program. Um, It was a state initiative that was launched in August 2022 for actually children from low-income families for the state to deposit at least $500 into a a college savings account for them. CalKids is that savings account. Okay. And why was it started? The the main point of this is, is really to increase access for low-income students to really to higher education. So the the main goal is to encourage families to, number one, begin thinking about higher education and then even possibly saving um, for higher education. Then, of course, the biggest bonus, when, when kids do graduate from high school, they get to use that money. 
Okay. And so who is eligible? So regardless of of parents' income, any child born in California after June 2023, they get $100. As far as students identified as low income and students identified as English language learners, if you were in grades first through grade 12th grade during the 21-22 school year, you're eligible. You get $500 in the account. If you are a first grader in the 22-23 school year and then any school year after that, you are also eligible. Um, You get $500. For Any of those students, if you are also considered a foster youth, you get additional $500. And then if you are classified as a homeless student, you get an additional $500. Got it. So can you give us an overview of how many kids have not signed up yet um, for these accounts? I mean, it's pretty bad. So you have, looking at the student side, more than 3.6 million children who are eligible for this program. And of course, the program is young, but... Only 8.3% of eligible students have signed up. So only 300,000 have signed up. Across the 58 counties in California, like the percentages remain pretty low. And what about for newborns? Is there a difference there? I think it's pretty safe to say it's a little worse because they're not even at 4% um, participation rates. Because for newborns, there are over 536,000 newborns only a little over 20,000 have signed up. So that's about 3.8%. So it's pretty bad. So LaSherica, what is happening? Why aren't people signing up for this? The state treasurer's office, which oversees the program, you know, they talk a lot about the program is young and it hasn't been two years yet. They kind of look at it as because of how unique this program is, they're kind of starting from scratch as far as being creative and learning how to even reach people and educate people about this. So another problem is one of the ways that people are supposed to find out is through these notification letters, these these mailers um, that the Cal Kids program sends out. So it sends out one-time letters to all of the eligible students. Um, and then for newborns, it's slightly different because they get a letter um, each month. But they send out those one-time letters. But as I was talking to advocates, for example, with Ian Poverty in California, it's an advocacy organization. You know, they said a lot of people ignore those mailers. Like, they don't trust those mailers. So so that's an issue when you have people, number one, who don't know about the program. Um, and then when, when these mailers and things do go out, you know, they don't believe them. Another challenge is... Obviously, the students make up a big part of this, so maybe schools can be doing something. But advocates have also told me that not all schools are equipped or or have the resources to do their own outreach. So that's a problem. And of course, when you when you look locally, the problems may differ. You do have areas like San Francisco and Oakland who have their own program. So is there confusion there because they have their own program? And do they think this is the same? But If you could put one word to the challenges, it will be awareness. Just people are not aware. What can this money be used for? So students can use the money at um, any eligible higher education institution. So that can be community college, university, um, you know, vocational school, technical school, professional school. That's pretty straightforward. The funds themselves, which over time should have grown from interest, but the funds themselves can be used for tuition and fees, books and supplies, either on or off campus, room and board costs, um, as well as equipment for a computer um, or just other required equipment that students need for school. And so what else did the did the state treasurer's office tell you about the challenges for reaching all these kids? So the state treasurer's office, they are a small group. They only have about four people. And the state treasurer's office admitted that that, that's, that is a challenge for them. But, you know, the state officials do say, you know, California is a large state. They are tasked with promoting other programs. But also they say they're working to be creative to consistently increase outreach. They've done outdoor signs. They've done things on social media. You know, they're in the process of doing um, media campaigns. You know, they're, they're asking for help from the school districts. They said they have partnered with over 550 community and advocacy organizations, um, healthcare networks, after school programs, all of those organizations to try to get the word out. So can you tell me what some school districts are doing to try to reach more families? There is one school district, actually the state's third largest, the Fresno Unified. 
they are leading the state's efforts to try to increase access among their students because actually one of the board members, Andy Levine, he he proposed a resolution for the school district to make a system-wide commitment to inform their families and make their families aware of the accounts because before now, they just hadn't been spreading the word like they could have. Elizabeth Jonathan Rosas, Andy Levine's colleague on the Fresno Unified School Board, supported the resolution. She's the mom who had trouble verifying her own foster son's CalKids account. When the school board discussed whether to pass the resolution, she took the opportunity to share her own experience. There were some people in the audience from the state, and so it was important for them to hear that, you know, there could be some tweaks to make this program more accessible to people and maybe give them some ideas as to how, um, from a state perspective, they could make it easier for parents. Elizabeth wants to make sure that the district takes steps to help families access CalKids. We have a very active parent engagement um, work, and we do a lot of step-by-step work with our parents to get them into various things, you know, get informed and involved in district activities, curriculum, school site council. So there's a lot of touch points with our parents. And so incorporating this messaging and how important it is and extra additional help as parents might need it. You know, do they need their number? Do they need to know how to sign up, how to view the account? What is it that they need um, to be able to to access these funds. And so providing more hands-on access to that, I think will be important. Mailing maybe those postcards multiple times a year because, um, you know, people move and we have a lot of people uh, changing schools and whatnot. So I think if, if we allowed kids once they're applying for college or maybe in their senior year through their counselor, maybe they could activate the the program at that point, and they could see, the kids themselves could see what they've got. She says foster parents may need extra help because they face unique challenges to sign up their kids. It would make sense for the state, given that they're a ward of the state, to activate the account for all foster kids, and social workers have that as part of the regular paperwork, because that kid may may go back to their birth family Um, They may go to a relative. And so it's not entirely clear, you know, who's supposed to activate it and at what time. LaSherica, can you share what advocates say needs to happen? What outreach strategies are they recommending that could help reach more families? One of the things that advocates believe needs to happen is more data be available so that people see how bad the problem is. They also suggest things like, In whatever communication is being done from the state, make sure it's not just in English. Make sure it's in in multiple languages so that, again, they can reach families that way. Advocates believe that it's also going to take local leaders in different communities being out and educating families on the program. Other, Other suggestions are even rewriting, kind of going back to that outreach, whatever it is, writing it in a way that anybody can understand. So that may be breaking something down to third grade reading level. And and probably one of my favorite suggestions was creating like welcome kits with the student ID numbers. So let's talk about those student ID numbers. This is a state student ID that every student in public school in California has. And CalKids requires this ID to activate the account or even just to check to see if your kid is eligible. This is this is the same number that Elizabeth Jonathan Rosas had such a hard time finding. LaSherica, how do parents find this number? The notification letters have a Cal Kids code. But again, everybody's not keeping those. Everybody's not believing those. So if you do not have the Cal Kids code, which which would already tell you you're eligible, but as a student, you can have your student statewide student identifier. It's this 10-digit ID that's assigned to your student um, across the state. So what's what's different about this, this is not your student's school district ID. So for example, of course, my kids have a student ID for Fresno Unified. It is not that number. And that, that's been a challenge as well, because not a lot of people know what the ID number is and they don't know where to find it. Again, for me, I actually went to my parent portal and I pulled the ID number from there. The ID numbers may be found on those parent or student portals. 
on student transcripts, even on student report cards. Those are um, all places where the ID numbers can be found. But for whatever reason, if you still can't find them in those places, Cal Kids does recommend reaching out to the child's school or even the school district to get that number. Okay. What other tips do you recommend parents kind of have handy before they go check? If you don't have the Cal Kids code, know what county your student was enrolled in. Have your student's date of birth because <laughs> you'll need that. And that's all you need. You would go to the registration site, which is calkids.org. You would enter the county. You would enter the student's date of birth. You would enter the SSID number. Then you click register and you set up an account. Elizabeth is happy that her son has some money saved for college that will grow some by the time he graduates from high school. At nine, he has big dreams. At one point, he wanted to be a dinosaur. So there's that. He has two loves, Takis and, um, you know, heavy-duty mechanic equipment, trucks and whatever else. So something like that along those lines. What would you tell families in Fresno and throughout California about what they need to know about CalKids? What parents need to know is that there is a program that's investing in the future of California kids, that there are no strings attached. Um, All you have to do is claim the money and watch it grow. You have a little seed money there for your kid to um, go to college or pursue secondary education, community college, you know, for the future of your kids. Understanding that education is important and the state is, is investing in your kids specifically. So go out there and claim that money. It's the easiest, you know, the 500 or $1,000 you <laughs> that you can get. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Education Beat, Getting to the Heart of California Schools, a production of EdSource. You can find a link to LaSherica's story and a quick guide that answers a bunch of questions about CalKids in our podcast notes and at edsource.org. Our producer is Kobe McDonald. Special thanks to our guest, Elizabeth Jonathan Rosas and reporter LaSherica Thornton. Our CEO is Anne Vasquez. Our theme music is from Blue Dot Sessions. This episode was brought to you by the James B. McClatchy Foundation. I'm Zadie Stavely. Join us next week and subscribe so you won't miss an episode.